Welcome back to Manum Across the New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling, as you will see what's going on on our lovely island of Thorn Hollow today. Well, we'll be relaxing as per usual. Eurovision today, how will it go? I don't know. Apparently there's a lot of um, drama around it already, which, um... I don't know if that's necessarily part of a course, but normally, normally the drama surrounding Eurovision tends to be around the voting results, but still. Alas, um, we'll just have to sort of see how it goes, but hello everyone, right now in Fawn Hollow, it's at 1.08pm on Saturday, May 11th, 2024. Um, not going to talk about your original, I, I mean, I guess I'll talk about it tomorrow once we actually see all the performances and whatnot, but, um, apparently there was, like, Northern Nights, um, over the UK last night, which, I don't know, I, I was already, like, I think I was probably asleep by the time, well, actually, my, my friend actually did send a message in chat, but I actually straight up did not see it, um, <laughs> So unfortunately, I didn't see it. I, I, I heard after uh, I was talking to uh, my mother. My mother's like colleague said that, and I was like, "Whoa!" I didn't. I actually genuinely had no idea. Then you can just see it. I mean, you can see it all over the internet now. Where people are just like, "Whoa!" We had Northern Nights over the UK, which, on the one hand, Northern Nights are beautiful. Like, um, you might be like, "Oh, did you feel like you missed out?" And the answer is no. I've, I've actually seen them before. I've, I've been to Iceland on a family holiday, and we watched them. We saw the Northern Nights, and they are breathtaking. They're they're beautiful. And it was it was absolutely amazing. It was definitely one of the, my favourite things I've I've seen on holiday. Um, so on one hand, I've, it's fantastic. We we oh, it's, it's amazing that like tons of people who probably wouldn't normally get the opportunity to see the normal nights get to see it. On the other hand, I guess I can't help but feeling a little bit not despondent about it, but a little bit sort of cautious. One just like hmm. I don't know if we should be seeing normal nights in the UK. It was probably um a sign of. Well, I mean, obviously, sign of climate change. Not to say there aren't like a million signs of climate change already, but um, it's sort of like this seems it's just like a no sort of omen. But it's a really, I guess, it's a very beautiful omen, if anything. Um, I, I guess, a part of me can't help but be a little bit worried. Whereas it's like, hmm, that seems like something which shouldn't usually happen. You know, and I, I can't help but think of, I, I suppose, mild spoilers for Life is Strange, where you know, like these big cataclysmic, not cataclysmic, these big crazy events start happening um as this like apocalypse of uh, comes around well, it's not really apocalypse but, okay um, maybe like big spoilers of life is strange the first one but it's also like 15 years old maybe now um no there's no way hold on it did not come out in 2009 it probably came out in 2012 so maybe like 12 years old life is strange well didn't life is strange also have like controversy around it not oh, 2015 okay it was 10 years old um not necessarily controversy but apparently like the developers behind it didn't like want lgbt representation or something in it. i can't remember but there's something about it i read it and i was just like what and then like the, the comments i read about it were rightfully just like this is by far and way the weirdest <laughs> hill to die on i suppose because it like the entire community is like the entire like plot point spoilers of life is strange one is like fueled by this um, uh, by a lesbian romance, right? So, um, anyway, but the point is, what what was the point? I don't really have a point. Oh yeah, so a plot point in Life is Strange One is that okay. The um, um, small summary: the the main character, the MC Max Maxine. Um, oh, we we need to get some um, bells because I I do not want to be stuck with bad luck. Um, gets the power to rewind time for like short snippets which is honestly a really clever concept to put in like this sort of it's not a visual novel but visual novel-esque game um where you know you can basically see all the outcomes you rewind and see what happens um and see how that changes and really i don't think any of the others can really come back close to topping the cohesion i suppose of a power within the gameplay um because it's just something which goes so naturally hand in hand as like a way to expand upon the genre i think of storytelling um but the thing i was gonna say is like she gets new powers and then like each of these chapters is like a whole new day or something where crazy new things start happening like on the first day it starts like snowing in the middle of june or something and then on the second day it will it would start like um there was like an eclipse or something i can't remember but like all these like weird crazy things which are honestly very beautiful but very scary i suppose in the context start happening and i can't help but feel like maybe someone is having their own life is strange moment out there it's certainly not me i've not i've not gained the ability to rewind time maybe one of my friends have i don't know <laughs> but um 
if they have, you know, the Northern Knights in, I, I think is a perfect sort of like first beautiful omen. <laughs> um, I don't know what I'm saying. It's such like a sort of weirdly pessimistic, not pessimistic, but apocalyptic sort of conversation I'm having, but like a, a beautiful omen of the apocalypse. <laughs> I'm trying to think of, like, Homestuck kind of has that as well. Homestuck is all about, basically about what the apocalypse is happening and how these teenagers play this game to, it doesn't actually save the world, but they create a new world, I suppose, in its stead. Um, I, I I talk about it all the time, but I think I, I love the concept of Homestuck so much, like, um, the ideas behind it, this world. It, it's so perfectly, it, it's one of, like, the most perfect young adults sort of, like, I'm not sure power fantasy is the right word, but you know, the young adult fiction where it's all about, oh yeah, only the teenagers can do anything, that sort of thing. Um, I, I absolutely adore it as a concept. Um, and, I, and I love thinking about it because the world building in it is really cool. Um, but it's basically the same sort of thing, like the apocalypse happens and... I mean, I guess it looks more destructive in Homestuck because of the yeah, sort of paints down the way it depicted from the main character's perspectives. Or it's just like a load of meteorites raining down, but it probably would look very beautiful. Um, from the ground, right? Like a load of soaring meteors through the sky, right? Um, just like, um, it, it, it would be like, because meteors, I suppose, at least from down here on Earth, look like a load of falling stars, don't they? Uh, shooting stars, that's what they are. They're like um, a bit of space debris sort of burning up. Um, and that sort of beauty is something which, I don't know, I, I guess we're sort of, and what I'm now expanding into is, is this sort of like trope, which I'm now thinking of because of like Conquest Star Rail, where I don't really want to give spoilers. It's not really like a be, it's not really the same sort of thing, but the, the expanded trope, which I'm about to talk about, which I don't know what it is called, is the sort of thing I have in mind, where it's like the beauty, not beauty within dying or anything like that, that's what it means, but like beauty throughout destruction. I guess maybe Jin from League of Legends is a really good example. Obviously he's villainous, um, but there's different ways to portray it. And I think it's a really fascinating sort of media trope, I suppose, mainly because of the sort of like tabooness around surrounding death and deceasement and destruction, uh, which is totally, totally fair because those are inherently quite bad things, aren't they? Um, you don't really want things to be destroyed. You don't want the apocalypse to happen. You don't want people's lives to be needlessly lost, right? Um, but like portraying it in such a beautiful way, I, I guess it's because it's sort of like sub, such a weird subversion of a taboo. It makes it such a fascinating trope, doesn't it? Sorry, a little bit of a pause. Um, I would like to preface by what I'm saying, but I don't think this is the apocalypse or anything like that. It just like, it doesn't it feel like something from like Life is Strange being like, whoa, check it out, the Northern Knights. Because right now everyone's like, wow, it's so pretty and everything, and it is pretty. But you know, it, it could just be the first step. <laughs> Maybe this is me being <laughs> way too much of like, um, looking at my life, like, not looking at my life like a story, but being like, wow, this would make like a good, good story beat or something. Be like, this is the first sign of omens to come or something. And then maybe like next week or something, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think what would happen. What was it? I mean, we had an eclipse recently, but it was a planned eclipse. In Life is Strange, it was um, an unplanned eclipse, wasn't it? And eventually it culminated all with like a, a giant tornado or hurricane or something tearing up the entire town? Is it a town? I don't, I don't really know what it can, is considered that. Uh, I should charge my phone by the way. Oh, I should also charge my headphones. That's, that's, a, that's another big thing. my earbuds and charge them because I don't usually charge them but I should because they were very much of the cases running out of battery and I completely forgot about that um because I can charge my phone um I'll be going to a friend's house to watch we'll have a mini Eurovision party nothing particularly crazy I'm in fact wearing a clothes I'm already going to wear for it um rather than wearing my sort of lounge around at home clothes um it's nothing really fancy I'm gonna be honest it's um so I don't really know why I brought it up. Just just in case you were curious, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know what voice that was. Um Yeah. I don't I don't really know what I was saying. If you don't know, there's not gonna be a stream tomorrow. I streamed um on Thursday instead because I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be busy uh, on Sunday. And I might not be busy necessarily, but I might not have enough time continuously for three hours to, to stream. 
So it's just taking a precaution. Do we have enough coconuts to sell to... We might need a few more coconuts, I think, to make sure we hit the mark of whatever it was. Um, apart from that, I don't know what I'm going to do for today. I, I guess I should work on my thumbnail art, to be perfectly honest. That's a, that's a good point, but I might not. Because um, I, I want to play some games. It, it's a thing that I've been finding, but I have no time to... Not I have no time to play the games I want, but like uh, if I want to sit down and play a longer game or something. I mean, like yesterday was like the first time in, I think, in a week or something. I actually played some games with some of my friends. I played like... Did I even play an ARAM? I think I played an ARAM. I have no recollection of what happened about ARAM or... Oh, I was playing Twitch. It's coming back to me. I was playing Twitch and we had a horrible team. We had like a Yasuo with a Wind War and we had a Shaco Assassin. So I basically just died every single fight. Um, then we played a bit of Minecraft Gartic Phone. Um, I quite like Gartic Phone, to be honest. I, 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 I find my, uh, Gartic Phone very fun. Um, but mainly because I just... I, I guess it's like I like short maybe it's because like short form drawing is not like stressful <laughs> for me i suppose um which is fair and it, it probably goes hand in hand you know so some people like gartic phone because they find it funny and some people are just like yeah it's not my thing mainly because you know i mean the, the, i think there probably is a correlation how much you like gartic phone of how much you like drawing because that's kind of like the entire premise of a game isn't it um not so but you had to <laughs> excuse me had to be good at drawing or anything but I'm, I'm sure it certainly helps. Or, or it isn't a deficit, I should say. Um, but we played a bit of Gartic phone Minecraft. <laughs> Which I, I'll talk about that tomorrow. No, day after tomorrow. Because I guess tomorrow will be Eurovision. Um, if I remember. But, but, but long and short of it was like... I realised like halfway through my second build that I was doing. I was like, why am I building everything like diagonally? Instead of building it like straight on. And I, I genuinely had no answer for what I did. But then I just made it my thing. And I just built everything diagonally from that, that point onwards. <laughs> It's very funny. Um, I think we played a bit of Lethal Company, new patch. W went to that new planet or whatever with all the robots on. It was a nightmare. <laughs> what can I say? Um, it was good times. I know there's a new enemy as well. I didn't get to see the new enemy though. Um, yeah. So what am I going to talk about? I don't know. Oh yeah, I was talking about like a, a, a beautiful apocalypse sort of thing. Um, I think it's a really cool trope. This sort of like, um, I don't want to say beauty within death because that is the wrong sort of impression. I don't want to give the impression that death is beautiful necessarily um, or death is anything but a sad thing in real life. But I think portrayed through media, there's like a weird sort of juxtaposition of it, which is, I, I guess that's what I'm getting at. It's this dichotomy, this juxtaposition I find fascinating. Um, because obviously death is used all the time as like a story element. Um, I mean, it's a thing which is probably a universe, the only universal constant maybe, um, for all of us, right? Like, eventually, not, not to be macabre or anything, but it is a thing which happens, that all things must come to an end, right? Um, and just this, the trope of displaying it as like a beautiful thing, or like a, um, rather than like a scary demonic grim reaper or something, you have like a very calm, patient, beautiful, like grim reaper or something who, um, is more of a guide rather than, um, a reaper, I suppose. Um, it, it's very fascinating, I think. And I don't know. I, I don't know what this trope is called, but like... TV trope... Weird weather before apocalypse. Oh, it's, it's actually just called weird weather just before the end? Next up, the end is nigh. Yeah, kind of. I guess a combination of those. TV tropes, is it bad? Not necessarily. Weather dissonance? But maybe that's what I'm looking for. Some sort of kind of weather control machine. No explanation. Okay, well, if I do. Okay. Weather dissonance, I'm gonna go video games, I'm gonna find life is strange. Life is. Um, it's one of several anomalies heralding with deadly tornado approaching Arcadia Bay. Yeah, okay. Um. I forgot what I was going to say. I mean, weather, weather is used as a literary tool a lot of the time in the, for like, a, what's it called? Like, pathetic fallacy, right? Um, 
because weather can sort of convey a lot it's, it's like using the environment i suppose to convey general atmosphere mood and emotions without having to tie it down necessarily to a singular character which can be a very nice flexible tool you know just like oh you want to have a sort of general impression of what everyone feels but you don't want to have like oh she was crying or uh, oh he felt really sad about something you can just have like a, a heavy downpour and most people will make that sort of um literary connection being like oh heavy downpour it's like a dreary and sad mood um but I guess, you know, certain weather forms are very sort of beautiful, you know, like the eclipse can be. Uh, make sure that you at least look at it with uh, the eclipse glasses on or through a pinhole box um, because you do not want to damage your corneas. <laughs> um, or, well, any part of your eye, I suppose. But, you know, Northern Heights might, might be one of the most beautiful weather phenomenons, right? I'm not sure if it even constitutes as a weather. Maybe it would be better to say meteorological uh, phenomena. Which I don't even know necessarily, I don't even know how they're formed. Isn't it something about like ions in the air and magnetism sort of like ripping apart, causing the sort of colours? I swear I looked it up once, hold on. How is aurora formed? It, it's something like that, isn't it? But ions of solar wind collide with atoms of oxygen and nitrogen from the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, no, mind, that's a bit wrong. What heck's solar wind? <laughs> wind from the sun? I mean, I've heard the phrase solar wind before, but I've never really thought about what it is. I was going to say that, and curtains of light are caused by the lines of force in the Earth's magnetic field. I was going to say, it was something to do with magnetic field. Which is why it only appears normally at the polar regions, because the magnetic field is strongest at those regions, I believe. Also, another thing about, like, um, magnetic field fields is uh, magnet the magnetic poles, like, shift every, like, ten, what was it, million years or something, right? So it shouldn't be surprising, I suppose, that magnetic poles might be shifting, but who knows? <laughs> um, anyway, I don't know. Be a beautiful moment. Weird weather is perhaps... Is that a trope? I don't know. We weather distance, I, I think I'll use as a trope. I'm talking about... It's strange, I suppose, to see it in real life. It's like when it started snowing, like in... Was it like March a couple of years ago or something? Where it was just like, oh, full-on snow. Or it was like a surprisingly warm day um, in December. This is the, 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 not caveats, but the effects of climate change are, are very real, I suppose. Um, that is a, a consequence of them. <laughs> a bit pessimistic to end off. I, I suppose, really, you know, all, sh all I should be doing at this point is being like, well, let's appreciate, uh, I think, the Northern Lights while they're here. Apparently they're here tonight as well. So at least I'll try and keep an eye out for them tonight as well, just to see if I can spot them. And if I can't, then so be it. But for now, if you have been watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Deirdre and Deirdre Orling. Deirdre Orling, likes, comments, subscription, shares, greatly appreciated. Socials, Discord down below. Hope to see each other again. But for now, it's our farewell. So until next time, bye-bye for now.